Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with a video about energy and heat transfer. Go ahead and write down the question. Uh, please pardon the discoloration in number five. I had written the question and then changed my mind, so I cut and paste over it. But anyway, heat transfer. Energy transfer or heat transfer can occur in three different ways. And you can probably see what they are over here. We have conduction, convection, and radiation will be the third. I have it on another page. Well, let's go one at a time. Conduction. Conduction is heat transfer between two objects in contact with each other. Now, the key word here is contact. The two items are touching you do not have air or water between things that are going through conduction. I think we had an example in another video about somebody holding ice in hand. The ice and the hand, is they are touching, so that heat transfer would have been conduction. Now, one thing you have to have to have a heat transfer is things of two different temperatures. For example, we have hot dogs here on a, um, what is this? This is a coat hanger. You have hot dogs on a coat hanger. Now, the hot dogs in the coat hanger, were hot dogs came out of the fridge, but that's not going to matter as much because you're going to stick these things over the fire. The fire, of course, is where you have the different temperatures, and you're going to have the transfer going from the fire to the hot dogs, and in this case, through the, through the metal coat hanger. But anyway, just to remind you a little bit about these heat transfers. These solids have rapid or rapidly vibrating atoms. You may remember that even solids are moving at the molecular level. And the more movement they have, the hotter they are. And whenever we're gauging temperature, that's what we're doing. So whenever you have the fire here, and anything put in the fire, like these hot dogs, the intermolecular stuff in them will be moving rapidly. So you have the rapid moving that is in contact with those things that are not rapidly moving. So the rapidly moving items influence those that are not rapidly moving and in the process heat is transferred to the slowly vibrating items and that makes them move faster now what's going to happen here this lady who is appropriately saying ouch has put the hot dogs in the fire with the coat hanger and you know what happens the heat is going to be transferred all the way up into her hand so her hand at first was room temperature the particles and atom molecules inside her hand were not moving as fast as they were whenever the heat made it up to there. We've had a heat transfer all the way from the fire up the uh, coat hanger to the hand, and it's conduction because we're it, it, it's things that are touching her hand and the coat hanger. Now convection, you probably have guessed is not through touching items, but it's through liquid or gas. Convection is the heat transfer by movement of liquids or gases of different temperature. Let's take a look at this campfire. Here we have the campfire. Air near the fire becomes hot. And let's say air right about here becomes hot all around it. Becomes hot all around it becomes hot. It's air. It has a uh, it is does not have molecules that are close in the first place because it's made up of gases. But still those molecules become hot. So what happens is the air expands and will rise. Now here's why hot air rises. Hot air rises because it is less dense. Now literally dense means how much stuff is in a certain area. Let's say you have a container of air. Originally 
you will have molecules spread out pretty far. But still, if you heat up that air, you have molecules which are spread out much farther than they were here. So the farther out they are spread, the less dense they are. The more dense they are, the more they sink. The less dense they are, the more they rise. So that's why hot air rises, because hot air is less dense. So that's exactly what we have whenever we have convection. The air heats up and it rises. Now what will end up happening is cooler air around it will end up taking its place. Cooler air around it will end up taking its place. So what happens, the, hot, the cooler air comes in, it gets hot, and it rises. Now eventually it's going to come up to where it's not going to be as hot anymore. It will become more dense and it will fall and you have what is kind of a current here, a cycle of cold air coming into the hot air, rising because it's hot, cooling down again, and going back down again. And that get, takes us to this. That process is called a convection current. That's the cycle, the convection current. You can see kind of a similar thing. We have a flame, just a smaller flame, and you have the hot air around the flame, which is rising because it's less dense. After it rises, eventually it's not going to be as hot anymore, and it's going to circle back around, become colder air, and fill in whenever other hot air rises again. So you kind of have this convection current on both sides of this flame, and the same thing on this, uh, on this fire here. Let's talk about the third form of heat transfer, and that is radiation. Radiation is the transfer of energy, or the transfer of heat, by something called electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves do not need a medium. Now here's what I mean by that. You saw where we had conduction. The medium is the fact that they're touching each other this uh, coat hanger gets warm because of what's touching it, the hot dogs. The hot dogs get warm because of the fire. Convection goes through a medium. Liquid is a medium. It's a way in which you make things hot. Gas is a medium that gets hot around it. It kind of is like dominoes spilling. You have one domino that touches another domino that touches another domino. They're all connected. But radiation's a little bit different. You do not e need any specific type of medium for radiation. Um, in case of the fire, well, this fire here, you know we're going to have a convection current that is going up and coming down, and then that air kind of circulates anyway. But if someone is standing, oh, 10 feet away, You've done it before. If you're standing 10 feet away from a fire, you can still feel the heat. And you're nowhere near the convection current. This heat, which has just come to you without the means of air blowing at you or in the convection current, is called radiation. Now, the sun gives off radiation. In fact, we have all this amount of space that has no air for almost the entire trip, the sun gives off its rays. So space, not space, the sun is an example of something that gives off radiation. Now, whenever we talk about deadly radiation as far as like uh, x-rays and stuff, we're talking about almost something completely different. So don't, don't think about x-ray type radiation just yet. You'll, you'll actually see that the connection later on between that. So, now that we've talked about the three different kinds of energy transfers, that's conduction, convection, and radiation, let's talk about something different. Conductors and insulators. A conductor transfers heat easily. 
We're talking about objects here. They transfer heat easily. Uh, like the coat hanger and the marshmallows on the stick. The coat hanger is made of metal. It transferred heat easily to that lady who was holding it. If she had been holding the hot dogs on a stick, then that would have been a little bit, would not have been as much of a conductor. So in the whole scheme of things, gases are poor conductors. Liquids are poor conductors. And the reason why is because gases and liquids, they have particles that are far apart. Conductors kind of need things that are close together. And all solids are not good conductors. Some solids are not that good. Rubber's not a good conductor. Wood's not a good conductor. They're almost as poor as liquids are. But what's the really good conductor are the metals. Almost every metal is going to be able to conduct heat to allow an energy heat transfer to allow conduction. They allow conduction. That's what conductors do overall. They allow the heat transfer that will turn out to be conduction. Metals are the better conductors. Now, insulators are poor conductors. But there's a good purpose for insulators. I mean, take the handle of this skill. It looks like it's some kind of rubber. And rubbers don't, rubber does not conduct electricity very well. So what makes a substance a good conductor or an insulator is actually measured by the term specific heat. Now, right below here, you see one big whopper of a formula. We're not really going to use that formula much, but I guess kind of the thing to know is that C here is specific heat. So you can either take the specific heat of something, or you can solve for specific heat and put other things on the other side. I know we kind of dabbled in that, and solve for specific heat, but you see we got temperature in kelvins, we got specific heat, we've got mass and energy in joules. But I guess that just kind of goes to show you that there is a formula for the amount of heat transferred to raise one kilogram, this should be kilogram here, of a substance by one kelvin. But anyway, oh, let me get this off here. But anyway, I have a chart here of specific heats specific heat the higher the number the better the insulator so you see some of these in the thousands these in the thousands for the most part do not conduct electricity well I see hydrogen here I see ethanol here um, I'm not even sure what paraffin is I see water here I see seawater here remember the ones that are gases or liquids do not conduct electricity very well. And, and, and we mentioned wood is a solid, but it's not a very good conductor. This is an insulator. But the ones with the low specific heats, look at all these metals here. Silver, mercury, tungsten, platinum, all these are metals. These right here, they conduct heat. And you'll find out in later chapters, they will also conduct electricity pretty well also. Now here's an example of a specific heat problem. We're not going to actually solve this, but you can see what we have. You're given the kilograms. In this case, you're given the Q, which is the amount of energy, the joules. You're given the heat change, and as a result, you're finding the specific heat right here. But like I said, I just wanted to show you that that's something that can be done, and you know, you could probably plug those in pretty easily. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about energy transfers.